well on our way. <laughs> well on our way. That's right. We well, are well on well, our way. Well, what to have we playoffs. here? To the playoffs. A special edition. I don't want to say that the playoffs are here because I still don't want to playoffs. categorize the play-ins as the playoffs, but the postseason is upon us. It is a glorious time of year. The play-in games are going to be kicking off tomorrow. We're coming at you with a show tonight. We're going to bring you another one tomorrow with a special guest. Tonight, focus on the play-in games. Tomorrow, we look a little bit ahead at the full playoff bracket. Um, I couldn't be more excited to not sleep for the next two months, two and a half months. Let's (laughs) go. And tomorrow... We'll be into the playoff, but tonight we'll be off to the play-in. So, without further ado, let's talk. Let's talk play-in. What are these Taco teams start, Ball man? Tuesday, baby. Yeah, Taco Ball Tuesday on a Monday. Special Monday night edition. Crunch wrapping it up. Oh. Let's, uh, let's pull, up, pull up this bracket here. All right, cheesy fiesta potatoes. We want to start in the east or the west. I, I man, we got to start where all the all the hype, all the drama was, the shifting of seeds at the top of the conference and the bottom. We we got to start in the east. The east was totally out of control. The bottom four, the four seeds, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Those four teams could have finished in any one of those four spots on the final day of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, so as much as I, I guess don't necessarily am for this whole play in nonsense because I think it's ridiculous. I think you earn a top eight seed. You should get a best of seven playoff series, but at least in the East, it made every game of the season matter. And up until the final day, the four teams in seven through 10 could have changed spots and teams three, four, five, two, three, three four. four, two, three, and four all could have rotated. So um, it kept things super interesting um, all the way up until the last day uh, of the season. And here's what we have. Um, do you have a, uh, before we get into these playing games, is there a biggest uh winner or a biggest loser in your mind with how all these seeds shook out and how the play-in could affect things? I'm so glad you asked, Justin. There is a clear winner and a loser here. None other than a team who was the laughing stock to start the season. The Boston Celtics playing, playing awful, managed to go from, I mean, it seemed like they they were going into yesterday, it was like pretty clear three seed, and they managed to take the number two seed. They they sneak that one from the Bucks. We'll see if that really really plays a factor uh, with with the playoffs, which with these teams likely meeting, you know, in the in the second round. But um, that biggest winner may also be the biggest loser if they play <laughs> the Nets. <laughs> in the if first they round your calves tomorrow night oh my gosh oh, oh man congratulations on getting a two seed here's the brooklyn nets yeah <laughs> here's the, your reward here's <laughs> <laughs> oh man <clears throat> that that to me is probably the most intriguing component of this play-in on on the eastern conference side is the fact that uh the Nets are where, where they find themselves. <clears throat> and, um, you know, they, they have two games, hypothetically, to earn their way into that seven or eight seed. Uh, so, well, let's take a look at that. So, yeah. uh, the play in yeah. tournament on tell, the East. So, it. for those of you unfamiliar with the play in tournament, four teams fighting for two spots. Um, if you are in the seven eight matchup, you have like my friend said, two chances to earn one of those seeds. All right. You get to, you need to win one out of two games. If you are in the nine, 10 matchup, you have to win two out of two games in order to get a spot. So let's start in the nine, 10 matchup. Who is going to be our first winner? 
I am taking, I'm, I'm going with Trey Young in this matchup. Home I agree court, with you. Atlanta, you know, it, it's going to be that, that stadium was, was pretty wild last year in, in the playoffs. So I, I, I don't know. I, I see, I see the Hornets folding in this one game. And I see Trey Young up to his uh, magical ways of willing that team to, to, to win that one game. I agree. So that slots Atlanta down into the winner of that 9-10 matchup there in the middle there. Uh, but they have to win one more game if they want to get a spot. Who is Atlanta going to be playing? Mm. And Atlanta will be playing the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're playing the Cavs. Brooklyn. All right, so I'll differ. I'll differ from you on this one. Uh, just you know, for the sake of playing devil's advocate, not because I'm biased or have any, you know, no, affiliation no. in the matter. Uh, not but, not uh, at all. Not at all. I'm going to say that Atlanta is going to play the Brooklyn Nets. All right, and so the winner of that game then will claim an eight seed. So that would mean that in my bracket, I have Cleveland beating Brooklyn and earning the seven seed to face Boston, right. Brooklyn falling down to have to play one more elimination game against Atlanta, and the winner of that claiming the eight seed. And I'm going to take Brooklyn there. Uh, you've got Cleveland and Atlanta. Uh, who do you have earning the eight seed to play the Miami Heat, Cleveland or Atlanta? I'm taking Cleveland in that <sighs> Cleveland, all right. Way to get it done. A man's finally come to his senses. <laughs> I so think Cleveland, both- despite despite here here here's a I'll, I'll give I'll give some credit to Cleveland. They will this you know despite the injuries, I think they'll find a way to shut down Trey, and um, I think they'll get just enough production. I think that that's good. It's going to be a really close game. Like. I don't see this 9-10, this first game being close. I honestly don't see this 7-8, but I see that one <laughs> being – I see this game being being real close and just everything on the line. I mean, you could say played a lot tighter. Yeah, but playing playing for that final spot and that – Yeah. What, what, what night will that game be on? So we'll have tomorrow night so cash first- nets – Clippers, yeah, Cavs, Nets. The first two games are tomorrow, and then uh, will be Tuesday night. Then Wednesday, what? Wednesday night will be the other two. Yep. Right. So does that and mean th- then Thursday and Friday would be? Yeah. The... Or just Friday? Two games Friday or? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Or, no, two games Thursday, and then the the re- the playoff playoffs start on Saturday. I think. Okay. So I think they probably play their matchups on Thursday and then because what was the second game tomorrow Minnesota and LA yep okay so that's your reward for being in the 7-8 seat as well you don't have to play back-to-back nights you if you lose that game you get a day off in between playing the winner of the 9-10 matchup so yes they try and help that 7-8 seat out a little bit so they'll probably will play on Thursday, Friday will be off, and then Saturday will start a full slate of round one. But um, oh, so we're both we're oh, both oh, picking the seven and eight. Hold, hold up one second, clarification here. Both games on Friday. Both so, games Friday. Yeah, both Oof. games will be Friday. Okay then. And then and then the first round I think will be Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, first. So I guess you will have a team. Jeez, you you get your spot and then you hear immediately. <laughs> um, thrown to the one team will be thrown into the Grizzlies den. Thrown to the Bears. Thrown yeah, to the Bears den. The Bears. All right. So out west, um, we we both agree seven and eight seed are going to advance in the east. Let's see. What do we got in the West? So same setup, 9-10. Who's getting sent home first? I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking my boys. I'm taking the Spurs. Pop, <laughs> Pop finds a way. 
and um, young squad shows up. DeJounte is healthy, uh, but I, I don't see them winning the next game. <laughs> is he healthy? Yeah, he's healthy. He's lost a little bit of weight, but he's healthy. I don't know. I don't see San Antonio going. I feel like Pop, it, he probably dislikes the play-in maybe as much as <laughs> he's, anybody. He's just going to lose that game as, as a matter of principle. Like this, Maybe not as a matter here. of principle, but I don't think he – I think he's somehow backslid into being in there and was hoping that he wouldn't even be there. So like, I don't think he wants to extend this season whatsoever. Okay. I'm going to okay. take the new Orleans Pelicans. Okay. Um, Pels. Perhaps uh, a, an appearance by Zion, maybe uh, he's doing 360 windmill dunks saying he's healthy which means the team doctors are trying to say that he's not to protect their investment, but all they're going to do is alienate him. So I think if you can, you bring him back. You got one chance here. You got to win two in a row to make it. If he's healthy, why isn't he playing? Play the man. There. All right. We disagree on that, but that's okay. Uh, one of those teams is going to move on and have to play again, but who are they going to play? Clippers versus Timberwolves who do you got in this one? Oh, for sure the the Clippers my Spurs will be taken they'll lose to the Clippers Clippers will take that eight seed going up against the Suns um I love the way that Towns Edwards Russell Pat Bev are playing for the Wolves right now I think that squad's just got a lot of confidence right now so I that that game is not going to be close I, t- I see the, the Wolves taking on the Grizz. I agree. I got the Wolves beating the Clippers, and then I have the Clippers beating whoever wins New Orleans or San Antonio. Um, I don't know. I think to have a team make the playoffs that's 10, 12 games under 500 just seems ridiculous. A little odd. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. There's a reason they're, they've lost that many more games than those other teams. Uh, obviously, anything can happen in a single game. I mean, it is what it is. But I see Minnesota and L.A. staying seven and eight. Um, and we get two young teams in Memphis and Minnesota that uh, don't have too much playoff experience going at it, which will be exciting. Um, and an undermanned LA Clippers team that could get waxed by Phoenix in round one. But yeah. let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. So one other um, just quick, quick highlight I want to make here before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we'll, we're going to get into more of the play off preview tomorrow, but there's two matchups that are jumping out on the screen that I'm very excited to dig more into Western conference, that three and that six matchup. That's very, very intriguing to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking, eyeing up that one, penciling that in to watch those games. And then in, in the East, it's, it's going to be whoever Brooklyn, Brooklyn plays in the first round and Brooklyn will either get, ha ha, you guys were fakes the whole season. You deserve to lose or if they actually make it a competitive series, then it will be, Oh, we should have known this all along. Like this is Brooklyn. You know, when they're healthy, they could beat anyone in the league. So it's It's going to be very, very divergent narratives based off of uh, how well they do in that first series. But those are, those jump out to me. I'm kind of, I'm with you in the West, Um, in the East. I'm (laughs) I'm sitting here eyeing up this Philly Toronto matchup. And the more that I think about it, the more that I feel like Jurassic Park could just give Philly fits and just make them so miserable and make them drag out a long series that they don't want to be in. Um, I think uh, Drake on the sideline might get out. I just feel like some, some Toronto is going to be swarming on defense. Um, James Harden, I we'll get this is tomorrow's these are write down those questions we'll we'll put them to the grizz and and we'll we'll get his unadulterated you know story and perspective persuasion convictions beliefs and the truth 
about the potential of the Sixer squad. So that's 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 all we've got for the play in. Not getting ahead of ourselves into the play off. I've got two shout outs on the Taco Bell side here before we uh, wrap up with some of our revisiting some prior to the season predictions. <laughs> we we tried to look into our crystal taco the crystal ball, ball. You know, the crystal ball of taco. So um, first crystal off, ball Tuesday. Crystal Ball Tuesday. Got to give a shout out to my main man Lawrence and new leadership at the Arboretum Taco Bell. Yeah, my baby. favorite, my favorite spot for lunch break. Ordering on the app, going right in. That food is ready as soon as I walk in the door. That service is professional. It's courteous. Those guys are running, running a tip. Can you tell us the uh, the name and then the uh, location of the chain that you're at. Yeah, it's uh, so it's the Arboretum is the name of the shopping center. In, All right, uh, and who uh, delivers you the best customer service? Oh, my main man, Lawrence Miller. My guy. He's, he's going to be on the podcast soon, talking about basketball and Taco Bell. Lawrence Miller, um, haven't met you, but you must have made some impression. Uh, my guy here wanted to bring you into the fold. I look forward to meeting you and uh, hearing what you have to bring to the Taco Ball Tuesday podcast. It is going to be glorious. It's going to be great. So that's shout out number one. And going in the, the time machine here, remember that episode where we talked about the new Defy Taco Bell location? Oh, concept yes. With the drive-through, the multi-levels, the, drive under, the, the purple, the black drop. exterior. It is coming to fruition. What was once a dream, a a conception of mankind's wildest imagination will soon become reality in none other than Minneapolis, of all places, (laughs) Brooklyn Park, Minneapolis. I'm not sure. uh, Do we have any dates, estimated time of arrival? Because weeks to a month, I believe. From now, it'll be open? it, It should be open within the summer. Well... If you want to drive to Pittsburgh, I'll drive the rest of the way. So, (laughs) but we'll do a live stream. We'll do a maiden voyage during the playoffs. All right, man. So uh, we were we were blowing off the dust on some of our preseason predictions. Yeah, let's do a little uh, crunch wrap supreme. Uh, Do a little episode wrap up with uh, a quick look at the past. Um, We went back and looked at our season predictions for the East and West. Uh, we didn't do too bad, but where did we uh, miss out most uh, out West? The out West, uh, so <laughs> miss number one, LA Lakers at the number <laughs> four seed. <laughs> I had them as the number three seed. <laughs> the and LA Lakers. They are, have already gone fishing and nothing's even started yet. So and one, two, the, three, Cancun, baby. The Lakers experiment has ended um vogels out and then my second biggest miss was i, I had the grizzlies in but at the number 10 seed yeah <laughs> was where i, I had where the, the, the grizz yeah i had the grizzlies and the warriors as the seven and eight seed so uh i also am not sure why i had the blazers as a six seed i guess i thought cj mccollum would still be on the team and dame time would have played more than like five games or whatever this year yeah. so we we both had the blazers at six i also was blinded by, by my complete disdain for the warriors taking them at number eight instead of the uh three seed where they landed what what, what were your uh, hits and misses in the, in the east all right so when we go out east i would say my biggest miss here um would have to be my number one seed brooklyn nets <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it was a number one seed. They are That's far from point. it. But should they lose to the Cavs and then beat the Hawks, they could wipe out the number one seed and just usurp them in the playoffs. Anyways. Um, it's restored. And then my only other big flub, everything else was pretty spot on. I had one team making it that didn't make it. The Knicks, I gave them so much credit for last year, and they – uh, I would say we're a disappointment, but 
they brought me the most joy of the season, watching them suffer and toil uh, and torment over finding new ways to throw games away every night. Um, So thank you, Nick's. And your loss is my gain because the Cavs, the only team I didn't have making the playoffs, and here we are. Here we are. Look at us. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? You got any big flubs for the East? Uh, well, taking the Pacers uh, <laughs> to, to be the 10th seed. I had the Celtics super low. Celtics at number six. Uh, Hawks yeah. pretty high at five. Also took yeah. the Nets pretty high. I took the Nets at three. Uh, Sixers were up there. Bucks were up there. So, um, and then I, I, I had the Raptors pretty low. I had them at eight. I had them um, at 10, but they were afraid- playing for most of the season. For, for as wild as the final stretch here was in the East, I do feel like our, our expectations were more shattered coming out of the West than in the East. Yeah. Like, East was pretty. Because we generally got, I'd say, the top four or five seeds in the East and then in the West. Not All this right. is making me do is get excited for next year's predictions, and we haven't even finished this season yet. I'm like, oh, who's going to get drafted? Who's going to get traded? I can't wait to figure out oh, what my terrible list is going to be. All right. Stop I getting ahead of yourself. One little thing here uh, for one week into the season, we did our over predictions, and my over predictions or weren't over predictions. Over my, over my over reactions weren't overreacting. I was pretty spot on so i'm gonna go through them overreaction number one lakers won't make the playoffs <laughs> ding 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 write it down you heard it here first baby <laughs> and nailed it number two nailed it. that's our play-in team at best ding 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 write it down you heard it here first baby the nets <laughs> all right i said jaw was gonna win the scoring title i was a little bit off I said Giannis locked up the MVP after the first quarter of the season, the first quarter of game one. So 12 minutes in, he was already the MVP. And if I had a vote, he would be MVP now, not just because I said that, but because I do believe he's the best player in basketball. And I know most valuable, best warp, best F rapey, blah, 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 whatever your ratings are. I'm not really sure. You come up with a billion numbers that don't mean anything to me. I know it means something. Points, rebounds, assists, and dominating the other best guys in the league on marquee matchup night. So there we go. Uh, Giannis, MVP. And my last overreaction was that the Cavs are going to make the playoffs next year. And here we are, 2022 season or 2022 playoffs. I said that in 2021, so I'm going to count it, even though I met next NBA season. They're here, and they are really good. So It's not not too far off. I can't not give a shout-out to my main man, Mr. Triple Single, Draymond Green himself. Money Green! Back-to-back, our second (laughs) annual triple single counter uh he had three less games on the triple single scale but he played about 20 less games so all in all my main man raised his triple single percentage up eight and a half percent all right to go uh over 50 percent on the season uh putting up a triple single 50 percent of his time and yes Yes. coming in with season averages of 7.5 7.0 mr money green mr money triple single wins the award for the most average player of the (laughs) nba and yet and yet will be forever praised as the complete cornerstone and foundation and defensive yes. player of the year and bedrock well, I mean, of all the Warriors' success. <laughs> wait until he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, and then like 20 years from now, people are scratching their heads like, what? No. How could they have been so bl- – like how? This, this is how like inexplicable his impact is. 20 years from now, Justin, there will be a metric 
there will be a new Draymond score. There will be like a Draymond metric. Well, they'll, they'll find some way. Oh, you know, looking back, we found this combination of things that Draymond did well that no other player did. There will, I guarantee you there will be a new metric just because of how absurdly average and excellent this guy's yeah. first qualification will be getting like 24 uh the technical fouls in the and kicks, of kicks to the season. groin yes um, <laughs> uh, arguing with refs ejections near ejections um, near punches hits to other players but never so averaging more than double digits in any of your stat categories so correct uh I don't I don't have nothing else to say. Thank you, Draymond, for the end, endless entertainment, really. A sublime season. Um That's thanks right. for missing so many games. Uh, and thanks for the ones that you played in not really doing much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Keeping the counter alive. And we'll continue oh, yeah. to update that counter as we go and root for prolonged average performances. Best of luck to the Warriors even though I hate them and they suck. I hope Nikola destroys you. Let's yes. go. We'll be All right. So hard. For the we'll Nuggets. be back tomorrow with a special tomorrow guest. Night. We'll give you the playoff previews. Um, right. I might be slightly absent. Uh, so uh, due to the fact that Cavs Brooklyn will be on during the time of our episode. Um, so forgive me now. Forgive me then. Don't forgive me at all because you're not watching. I'd like to thank you for joining us on another wonderful episode of Taco Ball Tuesday. Taco uh, Ball Tuesday on a Monday. Yo quiero Taco Ball. And as always, live my, live my, my man. Check it.